Okay, I uh, spent Sunday afternoon writing these Excel Lambda functions, which uh, will do uh, portfolio statistics based off a, a list of closing prices of stock prices, and you could do portfolio statistics if you figure out if you just you know and, and adjust the weights, how much money you're going to invest in each each stock. Um, and you can do some really easy, really cool portfolio statistics. So these Lambda functions really automate the calculating a lot of portfolio statistics. And these are functions that don't exist on Excel right now. So, so as you can see, these Lambda functions are very simple. They're just based off of prices and weights. P, prices I called P and weights W. So in order to show you how this works, I'm going to go ahead and download some stocks and form a portfolio. And there are several ways to download price history. Um, you can go to Yahoo Finance and download price history for different different uh, tickers. You also can use the stock history on Excel. Google Sheets has a way to download it. But one of the ways I like to do use is something that's called Bulk Stock Data Series Download by Jason Strimple. And this is the website, finance.jasonstrimple.com, bulk stock download. And the reason I like it because it does something called the adjusted close. Um, stock history doesn't do adjusted close. And I don't think Google Sheets does adjusted close. Um, you can get it from Yahoo Finance with adjusted close. But adjusted close in includes dividends and stock splits and whatnot. So, um, so this is usually when you go in here, it comes up like this. So I'm gonna, let's form a portfolio. And I'm just going to put my own stocks in here. We use uh, Tesla and John Deere and Apple and Amazon and how about Netflix. So we're going to use those tickers. Now you could also do a, a CSV file with a list of, I actually did the whole S&P 500 and this will actually handle the whole S&P 500. But we're just going to do five stocks right now. And let's just go back, uh, let's go back to, from September back to like June for a few months. And everything else we can just leave as a default. We want adjusted close. We want the close. We'll do daily frequency. We want an ascending order, so we'll leave that check. That's very important. And then don't click on this. You want to click on get series right here. And it shows that it found... Okay, so I didn't want to go that far back. Let me let me do it again. I'm going to refresh. I want to go back three months. So I, I want to go 2022. I don't. We don't want that much data. We don't need that much for this problem. We'll go to June 2022. So let me try it again. Get series. Oh, I got to put this in again. Sorry. Uh, we were doing Tesla. John Deere. Apple, Amazon, and Netflix. So those are the ones we want to download. We want to download back to June 7th. Everything else we'll just leave and, we'll, and we're going to do it in an Excel file. Get series. And it shows it got 63 op observations for each. And we can open it up just by clicking on this. And it gives you this file right here. I'm going to go ahead and enable editing. So, so the, 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 these um, these Lambda functions, you could put them in the hard way. The hard way is you would go into Formulas and Name Manager, and we go New. And uh, like say you wanted to put this first one in, you would call it Periodic Returns. You can't have a space in here. And then you would just take this part right here and you copy it and paste it here. And then go OK. Okay, I'm going to go here. I want to go Control Z because I didn't want to cut that instead of pasted it. So can I go Control Z to get out of there? OK, I don't want to lose that. OK, so now I have it in here and I close it. So I could go here. Remember, periodic returns. I lose a day, so I could start it right here, and I could go equals periodic returns. It comes up right here as a function, and it asks for the prices. 
Now the easy way to put the prices in, I could highlight them or I could just highlight, I'm gonna use prices for all my calculations. So I'll just highlight this whole thing. I'll go up here and call it P. So now whenever, whenever I use P in my Excel spreadsheet, it'll always highlight those prices, those adjusted closing prices. So now I can go here, so I can go, go equals periodic returns, and then just put in P, and it's automatically going to highlight those. And it gives me all the periodic returns. And we make that percent, take it out a few places. Okay, and this is equal to, how, and that's just for each one of these. So all that is, I just, it takes this divided by this minus one, this divided by this minus one, this divided by this minus one, in order to get the daily returns. Okay? Now, so, so the easy way, so that's actually the hard way to put all of these in. The easy way to put them in is you, you, you can install an add-in in here called Advanced Formula Environment. And the way you go up here, you go up here to the store. And this all needs, uh, Office 365, by the way, it's not going to work unless we have a newer version of Office, Excel th for Office 365, and you type advanced in the Office Store, and this is the one you need, right? And you would add that in. I've already added it in, so I'm not going to. So the neat thing with this, this is showing the periodic returns that I just that I just put in there. I'm going to delete that, and, uh, and then I'm going to refresh. So if I go back to uh, the formulas, that's gone, right? So now I'm going to show you how to put them all in at once. I can go here. I can go from text. I want to import. And I, and I could take all of these, all these Lambda functions. I can copy them and paste them in here and go import. And they're not going to show up here right away under Name Manager. The way to get them to show up is you do this little refresh, the sync. And then we can go in here to Name Manager. You can see it works. I can see as soon as I as soon as I added that back in, uh, these numbers came up again because it used it found that periodic returns under Name Manager and was able to do it. So like the prices even shows where I define prices right here, right? And if I want to change, if I want to change, remember when I go here to P, if I want to change this, I can't drag this, right? And, and if I add, add more days or something like that, I'm going to go control Z. I have to go into the name manager and I have to edit this, right? And then I can highlight whatever the new ones are. Right? So this name manager is very handy. So anyway, you can see I have all these in here. And I'm going to show you how they all work just real quick. Um, so I found, so this is called the periodic returns. I also could do some summary statistics if I wanted to. Um, so let me go here and I'll go summary. Statistics. And uh, we'll just go, I'm going to do it for these companies. And then I'll, I'll go ahead. I'm just going to, to save time. I have, have, have done it once. I'm going to do it over here. So I get, so, so the expected return it's called expected returns right here. So I can go e equals EXP and then it comes up right here. Again, just put P because we already we already have it's all based on the prices. And then we can do the standard deviation. So I can go the standard deviation is called STDEV. So I go e equals STDEV returns. Again, P for prices. And then if you want to, you go and highlight this every time, but it's easier just to Put prices. The modified sharp is just equal to that divided by that. The reason I call it modified is because we're not ex we're not subtracting the risk-free rate. We can also do the variance of returns. The variance of returns is equal to var return again p. And of course these are all percent. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and format them as percent. Variance is not percent. Because it's percent squared, right? And the sharp ratio is a unitless number. And we can also do something called the excess returns. Now, a lot of this we don't really need. I'm just showing you. If you do want that, I have those calculations available here. So I just go equals excess returns. We need it. We need it later. We need it 
for an intermediate calculation later, but we don't really need to show it here. But I'm just showing you could have it here. Again, those are going to be, uh, those are also going to be percent, right? Easy to look at them percent. So these are the daily returns. So what ex excess returns means is you take each one of these returns. So you take that return minus its expected return. That. So all the Apple ones, you subtract that. All the Amazon ones, you subtract that. So it's just taking that. Like if I go equals this minus this, it's going to be the same number. So each one of these Apple returns is subtract an expected return and so on. You need that later. This is a lot of times called the X matrix for excess returns when you calculate the variance covariance matrix. And that's what I'll do next. I'll show you how to do the variance covariance matrix. And... Uh, so that one's going to be equal to this, and then uh, go across like that. And here I'm just going to go equals transpose. Now the new the new version of Excel, this is kind of cool. You used to do this as a matrix formula. You used to have to highlight where you want your answer and hit Control Shift Enter. The new new Excel it actually does a spilled array, and you don't have to do that. So anyway, we want the variance covariance right here. So I'm going to go equal var covariance merge. And again, based on the prices, and it gives you those. And you know, if you got this right, if you look along these diagonals, um, it should be the same thing as these variances we calculated here. And it is. Okay, and then we also, just for fun, we can do the correlation matrix. It's a little bit easier to read than, than uh, the variance-covariance matrix. Nice to know how, how things correlate with each other. And I'll just refer to these up here. Now the reason I'm the reason I'm referring this way is, say if I change this original, well, no, forget it. But if I if I change this this right here to another, like I re-downloaded and put another stock in here, it would automatically update all this. But anyway, so correlation matrix. I'm going to go equals correlation matrix, and again P. And if you have right, it should be ones in the middle. We could just check the correlation, say, between Apple and Amazon. So I could go equals correlation. This is an Excel function. And Apple returns are these. And the Amazon returns are these. And you can, it should be the same as these two numbers here, right? And it is. The, the correlation between Apple and Amazon. So we know that's correct, too. All right, so so now let's say we're going to invest. So we can do some weights, some investment weights. So let's say we had ten thousand dollars, and we want to and we want to invest two thousand dollars in each one of these. So I'll go ahead and so the weight would be if I invest two thousand dollars in each one, it'd be one fifth, right? One fifth of my money. Whoops, I should go equals one fifth. One fifth of my money since there's five of them. I want that as a number. We make that percent. So we're going to put 20% of our money into each one of these. And of course, if we did it correct, it should sum up to 100%. So we put two. If we had $10,000, we put $2,000 in each one of those stocks. So if we do that, we we would like to know um, some portfolio statistics. And the portfolio statistics. Is is the expected return on a portfolio. I can go equal portfolio expected return. And that, see, it asks for the weights, which are these. And then it asks for the prices, which are those. And then we can go to the portfolio standard deviation. Again, it asks for the weights and the prices. Oop. Try that again. Here we want the weights. We go comma to invest, and then we're gonna go prices. And these are percent. So you can see, if we just do 20% of our money into each one of these, my standard deviation, my risk, goes substantially substantially less than that one, right? And my return 
isn't too bad either. My return is higher than uh, than uh, almost all of these except for Netflix, right? Netflix and Pulse. So, so that's called the benefits of diversification. We also can do the Sharpe ratio equals this divided by this. Again, that's a unitless number. So I'll just copy the format here. Off the Sharpe ratio here. So now here's where you can use the power of Excel. We can go to Solver. So I'm going to go to Data. And I'm going to go to Solver. And I want to change these. So I just did 20% each. Can I figure out a way to get better numbers here? So let's say maybe we want to maximize. I want to maximize the Sharpe ratio. And uh, this is this is what I want to maximize. And I want to change these weights that I invested right here. Remember, I arbitrarily did 20%. Let's have Excel change these and try to maximize my Sharpe ratio, which is my return per unit risk, my modified Sharpe ratio. And we have to add some constraints. We want to make sure that they add up to 1. We want to use all our money, so, that, so that's going to add up to 100%. And maybe we want to say... Um, the standard deviation is less than or equal to the standard deviation of um, what's kind of one in the middle here probably this is like the middle standard deviation so we want to keep the standard deviation lower than the standard deviation of Amazon we don't want to these look too these look too volatile for us and yeah, so we'll, so then we'll go okay and then this, make sure we don't do any shorting. We don't have any negative weight here, and a, you know maybe a negative twenty percent here and a positive forty here, so it doesn't allow shorting. And then we go solve, and this is what it tells you to do. So if you had ten thousand dollars, you'd put uh, uh, two thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight dollars in Netflix stock, six thousand three hundred and twenty-six. So you can do it with Solver. You can mess around with a lot of different things. You can adjust different constraints. Um, so anyway, so that just adjusts the portfolio and told us, so I'll say if we had the $10,000, um, how much would we invest in each one? How much How much money would be equal to $10,000? i am going to F4 that times... So I put that much money in each one of these stocks, and and then um, the shares would be equal to. We would just use the the close on the last time on yester on today. So what did it close at today? Would be that. So it'd be, and that's going to be a number. So I'm going to make that uh, go to the home tab, hit the comma. So I buy. Uh, 4.51 shares of Apple, 13.63 uh, shares of Netflix, and 23.05 shares of Tesla. Remember, in most places you can you can buy partial shares now if you want to. Um, so let's look at this a little bit closer. My expected return is 0.248, and uh, that's higher than everything but Tesla, right? But my standard deviation is 0.2991. We, we asked it to, to be less than or equal to that at Amazon, right? So so it's, we kept our standard deviation very fairly low, and, but we got our... So that's the benefit of diversification. You could look at that. We could go here and we could like go to um, uh, conditional formatting and maybe highlight the uh, bottom uh, 20%. And make it green. So it tells here. So these are the ones that the benefits of diversification appear to be between um, Deer and Company, Amazon, Netflix, and Tesla. And then, uh, so sometimes it didn't work out, but a lot of times that's what's going to narrow down on because these have less correlation. Because the less these correlate with each other, the higher, the more benefits of a diversification you get, right? If they correlate very highly, you might as well just invest in one because they all act the same. So if they cor you know, so a lot of times when you're looking at the correlation, you're looking for you want to mix mix stocks that don't correlate with each other in order to get the benefits of diversification. But anyway, hopefully that hopefully you like that video. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these I'm going to put these in the description so you can use them. 
Remember, this is based off historical data. The results are going to vary greatly between what, what frequency, whether you do monthly, daily. Uh, also, how long, how many observations you have. Uh, so, you know, this is just one way to look at. But when you but when you see balancing portfolios, when people when when people are balancing portfolios, this is kind of what they're doing. They may not be doing it on Excel, but there's a program that's doing something very similar. Now, really. All this stuff I did here, and all this stuff I did here, I really wouldn't need to do that. I could just do this part right here. I just download the prices and do this, and I could balance my portfolio using Solver. I was just using this just to show you um, all the extra functions I have here, you know, that you can use. But really, we don't have to download all these functions, in, but because because in order to create some some of these, um, you can see that. Uh, uh, so like the, the correlation, the variance covariant matrix calls the excess returns function. Okay. And the excess returns calls the periodic returns and expected returns. So they call each other. These lambda functions call each other. So they, you should put them all in at once. Some of them you don't need, but just to be safe, just put them all in at once because they call on each other when you do any calculations. All right. So again, I'll put, I'll put these in the description and, uh, if you want to use them, you just copy them and paste them as I showed you in the advanced formula environment. Again, you just go here from text and you would paste them in there. And advanced formula, you just go out here and search the store and look and search for advanced formula environment. Or you can put them in there one at a time. My picture comes up if you like this video. Uh, I know I went kind of fast. You can pause the video and go back and look. Uh, hopefully that was interesting to you. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you click on my picture, it'll subscribe you. Give me any comments if it was interesting to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.